Good day, folks. My name is Chris Nitto from Oz Cyclone Chasers. Just bringing you up to date with how our weather center is going. This is our third update now on the awesome progression that we've been making on this system. Firstly, letting you know to access this, you need to be an Oz Cyclone Chasers subscriber. So please subscribe to us at ozcyclonechasers.com.au. Click on subscribe to OCC. Okay, now that I am subscribed, I click on the login button. The first thing that comes up is the weather center. Now, generally, it'll be the last map that you were looking at that'll pop up first. Now the first thing you might see is this blue outline. So that's one of the one of the cool things we've just uh, released in the last last week is these over or are these overlays for the actual boundaries. So Queensland, New South Wales, NT, all these sort of boundaries and the coastlines as well. Now for ease of use, what we've done now is grouped all the radars in alphabetical order underneath the actual state that you need that you'd like to look at. So for all the Queensland radars, alphabetical order there, NT, WA. Uh, and so far, we haven't quite added the New South Wales, South Australia, Victoria, Tasmania ones. They will be updated. Hopefully, stay tuned next week for those. They should all be updated by then. So at the moment, we're giving you 256, so region-wide, and then 64 very localised radar images. So let's take a look at a couple of the other changes. We're still only out to six hours at the moment in terms of our loops, but be aware, once the actual weather centre is released in October, uh, they'll, they'll extend out to 12 hours. Now, one of, the, one of the other key changes we've done is we've changed the locations that we're giving you now. We've, we're putting in a lot more locations that people want, and the other thing you'll find is that they're a lot clearer to see on the map. Uh, and if I go into Townsville here and looking at the satellite and radar, the latest here we've got, and you can see all of the all of the major locations are written in on there to allow you to better, and, and they're written in in a much better way, so you can definitely be able to see exactly where the rain is falling. Similarly, when we zoom in and have a look at the localised radar, you can see some of the more local landmarks written in. So this is an example here of Townsville. Here's an example of the Cairns region. So you can see here we're putting in all of the local landmarks. And look, we've done that for every single radar that we've got. Now, the cool thing that we've also added in this past week is this 64 kilometer an hour, uh, 64 kilometer satellite imagery. So this is the visible imagery. It's only available during the day because that's the only time visible imagery is taken by the satellites. Uh, but you can see here the, the sort of detail that you can see in this visible imagery. It's, it's pretty awesome to see. Uh, you don't get this sort of resolution with any other weather service provider, nor do you get the same resolution radar with any other weather service provider, and you certainly wouldn't get it on the Public Bureau of Meteorology site. On top of the key locational changes, we've changed the base map, and the base map now shows some topographical features here, some higher ground pops up here in, in darker brown. Uh, what we can see is this is the radar overlay. So once we add the satellite overlay, the base map gets hidden, but if we don't want to see the satellite because it gets a little bit too busy, we just unclick the satellite overlay button here, um, and uh, and we get back into this, uh, this particular... I find this particular interface a lot better than the plain Jane base maps that we used to have uh, and the Google maps which were very hard to read. So you can see there our nationwide base map. Now Shane's been working extremely hard to get this up and running and make sure that he's got all the major locations there, all the major radar locations particularly written or, or drawn up on this map. Speaking of radar locations, one of the overlays that we've added and available right now is the coverage overlay. So sometimes if you're looking at an echo that's maybe outside of the coverage range, uh, it might be underrepresenting what that echo actually really means in on the ground. And this is a really worthwhile way of, uh, of finding out just how strong that echo could be. Uh, if it is out of range and you can see it, obviously the echo could be a little stronger than what's expected or, or what is being shown. And I think this is a really valuable tool if we use it in combination with what we're seeing on satellite. I mentioned last week all of Australia's major road networks are now written in on the map and this is now available to the public. Last week it wasn't. So all of these things, or a few of those things I mentioned last week, but they weren't available on our public update. Now these are available on our weather centre. So you can see here all the major roads. And once we go into a particular location, in this case Cairns, you can see the road network is a little more complex and once we zoom right into the Cairns zone at the 64 kilometer range you can see the road networks becomes more complex yet again.
One of the interesting things that we've done also in the past uh, past week that we've released to the public is that now we've got adjoining radars that share information. So we've got the Darwin radar, the Catherine radar, and the Warawai radar here. They are both sharing information. In the past, uh, in our uh, in our uh, weather centre, we would only have one radar showing information at any at any one time, and it made for a fairly disjointed picture. Now you're starting to see the picture becoming a lot clearer as to where the rain is falling, which is extremely handy when there's some fairly strong echoes on the border between one radar and the other. So just to reiterate what we have done this week, we've created a couple of new overlays for you, coverage overlay to show you where the radars are going to be most and least effective, roads overlay to show you where all the major roads are, a complete reshuffle and revamping of all of our base maps here. Uh, which allows you to see boundaries much more clearly and allows you to make out the names of the places much easier. Operationally, what we've added is a 64 kilometre imagery here for all of our radar coverage. So 64 kilometre imagery, both in satellite, uh, which you can tell there is extremely high resolution. As I say, the highest you'll, you'll get in Australia and certainly higher than anything that's publicly available. We've added radar merging here, which means that uh, the Townsville, Cairns, Mount Mackay, Bowen radars all start to work together so we can get a much clearer picture of what's going on. So they're things that we've added in this past week. So what will be released next week? Well, next week we're going to release a lot of other radars that we haven't been paying much attention to and local satellite imagery that we haven't been paying much attention to because we're obviously a very northern-based uh, northern based group. But there are we are getting increasing numbers of subscribers coming from New South Wales and southern Western Australia particularly. So we're, we're certainly interested in providing them with just as much information as the north. And so we are increasing our coverage here. So you can see all these New South Wales ones ready to come online South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania uh, as well as a couple of WA ones that aren't there yet at the moment. The other thing we're working on at the moment and in prototype is that we can nest the radar over particular locations. Obviously Cooktown doesn't have a radar but what we can do is we can use adjoining radars and centralise them over a certain point. Now that you might think isn't a big deal until we have a cyclone and if we can nest the satellite, the model data and the radar animation and imagery over the top of a moving tropical cyclone or even if we can nest it onto, let's say for instance Cooktown is in the firing line for a cyclone, hypothetically speaking of course, we can get all of the focus of the imagery to be on that particular location, on and around that particular location at all sorts of resolution levels. And so once we add computer model data which is already in prototype over a particular location, the information that it can provide is going to be invaluable. And especially once we add observational data as well onto that map, along with forecasts, uh, it's really going to be a very useful tool during the wet season. So the official release of our computer model data will be the official release of the weather centre and that's not expected until October but you can see we've made some pretty dramatic improvements and changes in the past week uh, even those that are available to the public right now as subscribers but we are certainly working hard behind the scenes and as I say by the end of it I want this to become your number one weather source or weather information source. I've also got some other exciting plans in the pipeline but I'm not yet allowed to share those with you so Stay tuned for next week's update and we'll let you know how it's going. Hopefully by this time next week I'll be able to give you a date of the release of our computer model data. Also subscribers in the past, uh, in the past few days we've decided to uh, increase our coverage for our subscribers and given the fact that we've had such a very early build up period so every day now subscribers will be getting a WA, a NT and a Queensland video update to let them know how things are going. And they'll range, you can see today's updates, 11 minutes, 10 minutes and uh, 5 minutes. They'll range depending on how much activity is going on in a particular state or territory at that time. So once again, to become a subscriber, ozcyclonechasers.com.au. Click on subscribe to OCC. It's $38.50 a year. And once you're in, I'm sure you'll agree, it's going to be money well spent, especially as the season really kicks off. I'll talk to you this time next week with all the latest updates from OCC.